a special presentation brought to you by UCLA Alumni Affairs. I'm Amy Rueda, Senior Executive Director of Professional Programs and Career Management. And today we're gonna talk about camera confidence. It is a really hard transition that we've recently made from meeting with folks face to face to 100% Zoom. And it is a very awkward transition. But today we have a digital media, digital marketing, brand identity guru, Christine Buzan, who has been featured on the cover of Red Book Magazine, the BBC, as well as Cosmopolitan Magazine. I'd like to welcome Christine. Uh, Christine, welcome. Hi, Amy. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here and talk about this today. Well, we're thrilled to have you. Um, the reason this came up for me was that when we made the transition, I noticed right away that there were a couple of folks that weren't turning their cameras on. This issue has been coming up over and over and over in the media. I have read several articles about this. Forbes magazine says, yes, turn on your camera. And there are lots of reasons to do this. Primarily, you wanna be viewed as part of the community. The other thing is, it really sends the nonverbal cue that you are paying attention. And the third issue is you don't want to be out of sight, out of mind. And that's what's happening. It's the unintended consequences that are far more damaging than we realize. It's awkward and it's hard. Christine, help us get there. Help us move past that fear of being on camera. Definitely. So the truth is, whether we like it or not, this is the new normal. Teleconferencing isn't just a thing of the future. It's where we actually are right now. And not only where we are right now, but it's where we're going to be in the future. Back in June, NPR wrote an article stating that working from home is going to be a permanent part of American culture moving forward. And all this reminds me kind of of a decade ago when LinkedIn came out and we had to move our recruiting process from paper resumes to online and getting used to communicating with each other through the LinkedIn portal. It's something similar to that where you have to become an early adopter of the technology in order to really shine and succeed moving forward. And I know that being in front of the camera can be such a scary thing for a lot of people. It's um, scary enough when you're taking pictures. I discuss this a lot. Um, camera confidence is a term I've actually coined for my post-perfect class, which helps individuals feel and look confident in front of the camera. Um, and it's scary enough when you're taking pictures, let alone when you're on camera for video and then compounded on top of that, you're performing in real time for people. So that's really an intimidating technology to kind of jump into right away and have to hit the ground running on. But the thing is, you have to remember everyone is doing it. Everyone is within this boat together. And a lot of us, you know, unless you're a professional speaker or YouTuber or you're a TV host, you know, this isn't your everyday day to day. You're not being judged on how you look. So you just need to remember that and focus on making it as much like a real life conversation as you possibly can. So that being said, what I want to do today is go over some of my favorite tips and tricks for building camera confidence, as well as strategies that you can employ to make sure you look your best on camera. So everything can kind of, you know, go on autopilot and you can feel really good. You can focus on what you're saying instead of how you look. Tell us a little bit about Post Perfect. Christine is the founder and CEO of a very unique um, company that helps people move past that awkwardness of seeing themselves. And I noticed right away in taking one of her courses, um, and it was just the first one, but there were so many great tips that I had no idea would impact the way I'm coming across in pictures or on camera. And again, the fact that you're here to share some of those with us uh, could not come at a better time. What are your top list of tips that you have to offer? I think that the first thing really comes down to confidence. You know, you can know exactly what to do. You can have the best technology. You can have perfect lighting, hair, makeup, etc. which I mean, this is so overboard for the workspace, but this is all just a hypothetical. But if you aren't confident in how you feel in front of the camera, none of that matters. And I think that's really the biggest thing that I talk about in Post Perfect. 
one thing that I like to tell my students for post perfect is that you can reframe your nervousness into excitement. So instead of trying to calm yourself down and being like, Christine, you need to calm down. You need to settle down. What's wrong with you? Think about, Hey, what is it that I'm actually excited about for this meeting? Am I excited to share a new concept I have? Am I excited to show my reporting and show how my numbers have, have improved? Am I exciting to build rapport with my boss or my colleagues? So you need to reframe what you're about to experience from something that's like, oh dang, I'm so nervous into I am excited for this. Another thing I suggest to all my students within Post Perfect, um, this is really kind of the first thing we go over, is visualizing how you want to show up before you step in front of the camera. And it helps to kind of think of someone who you can use as a role model um, that does an excellent job of kind of conveying their thoughts and is seen in a way that you want to be seen. For example, um, you know, before coming to this meeting, I thought I had a time, you know, I want to be approachable. I want to be able to share my ideas. I want to help people. And coming in with that mindset, rather than thinking about, oh my gosh, everyone is going to judge me, that's very helpful. So have something, have a vision and be ready when you go into your meeting. The thing though with a caveat with that is I don't want you guys to get stuck in the visualization stage. I feel like so often we tell ourselves, I'll do X when I'm ready. I'll get in front of the camera. I'll turn on the camera during this meeting. You know, when I have my workstation figured out, when I have my hair done, you know, when I have that perfect lighting or when I buy this or that. But the truth is there's no such thing as ready. What we need to do is start living for who we are right now and the life we have right now instead of waiting on some future version of ourselves. because confidence is built through action. You aren't going to magically wake up one day and become ready and become confident. The way you become confident is by taking steps every single day to becoming that person you want to become. So what my goal for this presentation, now that I kind of talked about confidence a bit, is I want you guys to have specific strategies that you can use that I'm about to teach you. That way your mind is completely at ease next time you're on the camera so you can really focus on your confidence and your delivery. And I want you to know that if you feel kind of bombarded by this information, I've actually created a free guide for you guys. You can go to www.createcameraconfidence.com and you can download, it's a several page um, workbook and checklist that goes over all the concepts that we're gonna be introducing wow. during the seminar for your convenience. Um, and yeah, I'm super excited to jump on in. Let's go, because this is great advice. Yeah, so the first tip that I have for you guys for looking your absolute best on camera when you're doing these um, telecommuting meetings is your lighting. So when you are setting up your camera, your best bet is to have either your laptop or your phone set up in a workstation that faces natural light. So it's facing a window. You don't wanna have a window behind you. You want the window to be in front of you. However, the thing is I know with working from home, so many of us live in apartments or, we have to work in a study that doesn't necessarily have the best natural light. And that's totally normal. That's totally to be expected. You don't need to worry about moving apartments just for the sake of your Zoom <laughs> meetings or anything like that. So what I suggest doing is purchasing a ring light. There's a ton of great ones on Amazon of all different budgets, starting at $15, going all the way up to $150. Um, you can always err on the side of the cheaper ones. I actually include within um, the PDF a bunch of links to different ones that I have personally used that I think work really well. Um, One of the things I would say to that is you're taking a bur the burden off of someone having to know that the right technology, the right lighting source. I wouldn't know where to start. And I know that I don't need one for $150. Um, but knowing that there is an expert like you who can refer us to a wide range. Is it a wide range? It, it's a very wide range of things available. I think it's hard. It's a bit intimidating to, you know, with this new technology um, to decide what to invest in and what not to. And I know um, sometimes it can be like, oh man, I have to shell up, you know, $30 up front for something. But you have to think of it um, in the same way that you would invest 
in a computer or a cell phone for work, this is just like another investment that you're going to make. And so it, it will be worth it in the long run because it's something that you're going to use every day. If you are unable to have a ring light right now and you don't have that natural light, like I said earlier, the first step towards confidence is actually doing it. So don't be like, oh, well, I don't have my lighting right. I'm not able to start. Um, just be sure to avoid dim lighting. When you're meeting with your boss or your colleagues at work, chances are, unless you're doing a PowerPoint presentation, you're not going to be meeting in the dark. And the goal with this is to have things as close to real life as possible. So avoid dim lighting. I'd avoid fluorescent lighting, which can make you look washed out and tired. I know a lot of offices have fluorescent lighting, but um, you know it's not necessarily the best for these online meetings. Also avoid being lit directly from above or directly from below. I don't know if you remember when we're all younger and you'd sit around the campfire with the flashlight under your face and you'd have these crazy shadows you know, under your yes. eyes and your chin and everything. You don't want to do that during your work meetings. It's just not <laughs> professional to look, to look like that. So just keep that in mind. Another reason why lighting is so important with video calls, and that's why we're talking about it first, besides being aesthetically pleasing, making sure your face is well lit ensures that micro expressions are easily, you're able, easily able to decipher them. So a lot of the times when we're talking during a meeting, there's a lot of opportunities for pauses, for thinking, um, for mulling over ideas, and it's just kind of natural to have those silent gaps within conversations. The thing is that's gonna still continue on these Zoom calls. You know, our normal way of conversing with one another isn't changing just because it's been moved to online. But the issue with it is that a lot of the times when there's a lull in conversation on Zoom, you tend to think, oh man, has the Wi-Fi gone out? What's going on? Is something wrong? So being well lit, makes it so that way the other person's able to see you clearly, they know that you're thinking, they know what's going on within the conversation and everyone just feels a lot more at ease and you can have that peace of mind and be able to focus on what you're saying rather than focus on the barrier of the technology, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. That, that's been the main concern is out of sight, out of mind. And I think for a lot of people that fear of putting oneself putting oneself out there is incredibly intimidating. Um, some people have um, just a different kind of confidence in front of the camera, but a lot of us don't. And it wasn't until the pandemic hit that we were forced to. And it's, it's one of the things where if you know the business reason that you should do it, then it's really up to you to decide when you're going to like you said, there's never going to be a good time. You're, you don't want to wait till you lose that weight. You don't want to wait till X number of things happen. The sooner you can cross that barrier of fear, the faster you're going to become just completely unaware that you are on camera. It just becomes part of your day to day. I very much encourage people to the best of your ability jump on turn the camera on it every time you do it's less painful that that i do definitely no you hit the nail on the head it's a matter of just getting used to it and um you know having these tips that i'm going over will set you up for success so you're kind of like okay my lighting's in place my backdrop's in place my angles are in place that way you can really focus on building that comp camera confidence that's so essential to succeed mm -hmm. So that being said, my next point, uh, my next tip for looking your absolute best on camera is being mindful of your backdrop. I think one of the worst things that can really distract, distract from your message is when you're on a video call and you're located in a place that's super busy. Like let's say you're in your kitchen and there's people walking by, there's tons of things to look at in the background um, that are really distracting and you just need to be sure that when you're choosing the place that you're doing your video calls, it's somewhere that's quiet, it's somewhere that isn't really distracting, and it's somewhere that's consistent. And my mom is actually a teacher, so she's been Zooming from home. And what she does that I think is really great is she set up her workspace against a blank wall. And it's just a table, it's a chair, and it's a blank wall. And that's where she teaches from every single day. And you might think, oh, well, isn't that kind of plain? 
the reason that it's perfect is because it's plain, because there's nothing to look at in the background. It's just you're able to focus on her. One, another thing I suggest is if you aren't comfortable, you know, showing the entirety of your home, you can always purchase a privacy screen. And those come in a lot of different ranges of prices. I've actually included a few in the PDF that you can download. The main thing with choosing your location is I suggest zooming from the same place every single day. And the reason that is, is because consistency builds confidence, not only your own confidence, but con confidence of others within you. So if you're moving from one place to another every single day that you have to jump on a meeting, it's going to seem inconsistent to both your peers and your superiors. They're going to be like, okay, well, what are they doing at home? Whereas if you have one place that you consistently are located, they're going to know to come and expect you being there. I'll also say there are uh, a lot of people that don't have that luxury of having the blank wall, the space. Um, a lot of people have had to accommodate uh, a workstation in in their homes. Um, I know for me, one of the, the things that I had a hard time with was where to set this space up so that on the weekends, it doesn't feel like I'm in my office slash living room. Um, yeah. When talk about the same space, that is where that privacy screen comes in handy because sometimes you have to film in different parts of your home and that does afford you that consistency, that look, the, the brand that you're creating for yourself uh, remains very professional and that right there goes a long way and it's, it's very true. The backdrop can be very distracting um, or it can just come across as your, you know, your home office, which is fabulous. Other people use green screens and that works as well too. Whatever it takes for you to get camera confident, do it. That's, that's the only end game for this is whatever it takes, just do it. And this no, is for sure. Nike. I'm kidding. <laughs> Sorry. I love it. After you have your lighting and your backdrop set up, the next thing you need to ensure is that your camera is at the optimal angle. And what I suggest doing is making sure that your camera is even with your eyebrows. This will give you the most real life angle. If you're sitting across from your boss at a meeting, chances are you're pretty much eye level. So having your camera just a little bit higher than your eyes, right at your eyebrow level, will make sure that you are having that same eye to eye experience. You want to avoid shooting from below because this will give you a, you know, a double chin and it looks strange. A lot of the times our tables are significantly shorter than we are. So they go at waist level. So you tend to, if you're on your laptop, tilt the screen back and then have it looking right up oh. at you. You want to avoid this. Another thing you want to be mindful of also is if you are, FaceTiming or zooming from your phone, don't have it at a significantly higher angle because that looks really relaxed and kind of like, hey, I'm FaceTiming you on the couch, unprofessional. You want to be sure that regardless if you're using um, your phone or if you're using a computer, that you have it stable and you have it um, set up on a table or some kind of surface that is eye level with you. Because not only does it look more professional, it also will make you kind of lift your neck up, have your posture look better, make you look more alert, more engaged, and more like you're within the conversation. Another thing when you're setting up a laptop, you want to be sure that you're close enough to it to access your keyboard. So you see I'm like arm's length away from mine, but I'm not too close to it. Because the thing about these little cameras on our laptops and phones is that they're wide angle. Yes. So if I my face, yes, yeah, so if my face is super close to it, you're going to see a very distorted, blown out face and it's gonna have a hard time focusing. So you wanna be sure that you're able to keep an optimal distance. Again, you wanna have something as close to real life as possible. I don't know about you, but when I'm meeting for a business meeting, I'm not up in the person's face. So I try to keep my distance in the same way I would in an in-person meeting as well. And that being said, um, the next thing you want to be sure of is that your camera is stable. There's absolutely nothing worse than a shaking camera. As you all know, technology comes in, it shorts in, it goes out. Wi-Fi is unpredictable at times. 
So if you are not only have unstable Wi-Fi, but your camera is shaking nonstop, you're going to be freezing and glitching all over the place. So if you're using a laptop, make sure it's on a table. And if you're using a phone, I highly suggest in investing in a tripod. I've linked a ton of them um, within the PDF of all different price ranges ones that I use also. Also, if you get a ring light, normally ring lights have tripods built in them to balance your phone on. That made a huge difference for me. Um, the ring light and the tripod, <clears throat> excuse me. It really does. It does, it did. And yeah. also, it just sort of in a weird way professionalized my space in, a, in an interesting way. I, I mm -hmm. had it, but um, you know, I just like a lot of people think about it for, you know, social media influencers, but we are all social media influencers now. And it, it's, it's one of the things that does make um, a very positive uh, difference. Christine, it's interesting. Um, you just brought up Wi-Fi and we are organically, you know, having this discussion and your Wi-Fi froze up a couple of times, um, not very long, so the rebound was quick. But what would you tell people if they freeze midway? How should they how should they rebound from that? It's so funny. I didn't even know I was freezing actually, but that's just kind of it's the nature of the beast. It's something to be expected within these conversations, um, and. I know it can be embarrassing. Like, let's say you get kicked off of a Zoom meeting. This happens all the time to everyone, you know, regardless of what industry you're in and regardless of how good your internet is, sometimes these things just happen. So um, if you get kicked out, you have to let yourself back in, you know, let yourself back in. I would suggest if it is a more formal meeting, dropping something in the chat box and being like, hi, I'm so sorry I was kicked off. Would you mind repeating that for me? or you can privately message someone else if it's a larger presentation, if you feel like you've missed something. Um, if you are the one who's speaking, you know, just come back in and say, hi, I'm so sorry, where did I leave off? Drop in the chat box and let me know so I can be sure that I repeat it to make sure you didn't miss anything. So again, it's just, it's part of what it is and it's something that you, you know, it's not your fault, just move forward, keep on communicating. The goal of these conversations is to communicate, so. <laughs> Another tip I'll add in addition to, um, you know, having a tripod for stabilizing your camera is if you are using a computer, the best way to get it eye level is by using a filing box, believe it or not. There are lots of, you know, monitor risers online that you're able to purchase as well that come in kind of adjustable sizes, but just a good old fashioned filing box will work wonders. It's like the perfect height. And if you don't have that, you can always um, just use books lying around in the house too. It's, you know, you kind of have to get creative with this. It's a new frontier. I'm sure that there will be lots of different gadgets you can purchase moving forward. But I mean, you have to make do with what you have because being on camera is the most important thing. Another tip I want to give you guys is to be sure to clean off the lens on your computer or phone's camera regularly. These cameras are so tiny that even a small speck of dust will make a huge difference in how clearly your video is shown to other people. It's, it's really crazy. Just be sure there's like little lens wipes that you can use. Just wipe it off or even using a paper towel makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Another tip I have for you when it comes to the lens is that when you're on camera, be sure that you're looking directly into the lens when you're speaking. And when the speaker is speaking, be sure that you're looking at them. For example, right now I'm looking into the lens. If I'm looking at myself, I'm talking like this. And you can tell that I'm looking at myself, which is really awkward. Because you know, when you're speaking to someone, you speak at them in person. You're not looking off into the distance or something like that. And again, Part of forming a connection is making it as close to real life as possible. My next tip for you guys is to use headphones. Headphones are great because they make sure that you're heard clearly. The microphone is right next to your mouth, which is really helpful, but they also eliminate background noises to make sure that there's no weird echoes or distractions, or if you do live with other people, um, the chances of their sound being picked up is a lot smaller when you're using headphones. Now that we've kind of talked about the tactical and logistical parts of getting your workspace set up, I want to move into talking about personal presentation because I know this is something that does cause people quite a bit of anxiety. So 
When it comes to outfits, the truth is everyone knows that we're casual when we work from home. Chances are, even if you're an investment banker, you're not sitting at home working in a suit and tie all day long, especially when it's hot outside and it's been really hot lately in Southern California. The key is making sure that you're presentable when it does come time for Zoom calls, but not neglecting you know, your need to be comfortable and have a positive work environment at home. So what I recommend doing is wearing something that is work appropriate while you're on camera and keeping something like that nearby. So what I do is I keep three to four different outfits nearby at any given time. I have blouses, I have button up shirts, and I have um, shells and blazers that I can just kind of throw on top if I know that a call is about to come through or keep it nearby just in case a call randomly does come through just to make sure I am presentable and um, putting my best face forward on these calls. As far as dress code, I would keep it consistent with kind of like what you were wearing in the office before. I'm sure as time moves forward and this becomes the new normal, companies will come up with policies, but I know a lot of them haven't as of now. So it's best to err on the side of conservative and keep in line with what you would wear in person. As far as colors go, I know there's a lot of anxiety about don't wear this, don't wear that, wear this, wear that. What I would recommend is sticking with neutral solid colors, you know, like olive, navy, gray, um, and blacks, things that are kind of on the darker side because they tend to appear better on camera. There's a lot of talk about don't wear white on camera or don't wear black, that kind of thing. But um, you know, there's, you can't go wrong with a white button up shirt. The truth is yeah. we're not on Good Morning America. You're talking to your boss or maybe yes. you're leading a webinar and that's okay. You need to wear something that's as close to what you'd wear in real life. The thing is I would stay away from patterns just because it's confusing enough with technology and the screen um, cutting in and out, that kind of thing. You don't wanna be a big pattern blob that's frozen on a screen. That's never good and it's harder for the camera and thus the internet to pick up patterns. So I would, I would stick with solids. Okay. One thing I want to say is if you're someone who normally wears jewelry, you know, continue wearing jewelry. You can see I'm wearing jewelry right now. Um, it just makes me feel more put together and polished. It's something that I do professionally. However, you need to be mindful of the sound that your jewelry makes. So okay. if you're someone who wears a lot of bangles, you know, you're going to be talking with your hands, your microphone will be picking it up. Or if you're someone who wears large earrings, it might be a little bit more challenging with your headphones. You just wanna be sure that you're not creating any distractions or excess noises. And again, you know, the thing to keep in mind, everyone jokes about it, but it's true. It only matters how you look from the waist up. That's it. You don't need to worry about the bottom half of you unless you're planning on standing up um, and giving someone a tour of your house, which is very strange yeah. anyway to begin with. And I doubt that that will happen within the professional world. By that same token, when it comes to grooming, you only really have to worry about how the front of your body looks in the side. You aren't gonna be turning around and showing people the back of your head. So if you are someone who likes to style your hair in a specific way, just be mindful of how the front half looks and don't really worry too much about the back. If you are someone who wears makeup normally, but you've stopped during, you know, the pandemic and work from home, that's okay. I don't think people should feel a lot of anxiety about being full glam on these calls. You know, I mean, it's no secret we're all working from home and it's no secret things are more casual. The key is to just show up in the best way you can and in a way that makes you look alive and refreshed. So I just make sure that if you look a little bit washed out, you know, adding a bit of like lipstick or tinted lip balm and maybe some blush will make a big difference. Um, if you normally fill in your eyebrows, please continue to do so. The reason being is that micro expressions are such a key part of this new form of visual communication and eyebrows show a lot. If you feel like you don't look your best, one of my biggest tips is throwing on a pair of glasses. And now in this day and age, there are tons of blue light glasses that people wear, even if they don't have prescription glasses. So you can just throw on a pair of blue light glasses or your prescription glasses, and you know, it'll make you look more studious too. So everyone will think you're, looking re you're working really hard at the computer. Finally, the last secret I have for you guys to share is that there is actually a touch-up option on the camera settings for Zoom. 
So if you're on the Zoom app and you click the little video um, button next to it, there's an arrow, click on that, and then you can select next to a box, an option to touch up your face and skin. And you can mark that and it's kind of like an instant Instagram filter um, that will just make your skin look a little bit smoother and that will make you a little bit more confident. So again, I know this is like a ton that we went over. You can go to createcameraconfidence.com and download for a limited time my free PDF and checklist. So you can print out the checklist, keep it next to your workspace and your computer. And then pretty sure, I'm sure within like a week or two, you're not even gonna need the checklist because it will become second nature to you and you can work on your development and your delivery and your camera confidence. This has been amazingly helpful. Um, I know I was taking notes as you were talking. Um, it, it goes a long way, Christine, and being the subject area expert that you are, <clears throat> it lends so much credibility to your sage words, your wisdom, your advice. And I think for everybody out there, um, I think you've been given some really great tools. I hope you jump in, I hope you join in, and I hope you stay tuned because we will continue to have these career management webinars throughout the year. We welcome any input and feedback you might have. And in the meantime, go Bruins. <laughs>